Okay, so you know all those incredible pictures of the northern lights popping up everywhere lately? Well, it turns out it's not just our social media feeds blowing up. The auroras have been seriously putting on a show, like in some seriously unexpected places. Yeah, we're talking potential sightings in spots they haven't been seen in decades. It's pretty wild. Definitely wild. But what's behind it all? What's going on? Well, we're about to find out as we take a deep dive into the science behind these amazing events and the surprising reason why they're suddenly so active. And a hint. Mm -hmm. It all starts with our very own star, the sun. That's right, the sun. Now, I've always been fascinated by the fact that something as seemingly constant as the sun, you know, it's always there, actually goes through these cycles, kind of like a, a cosmic heartbeat. Yeah, that's a great way to put it, a cosmic heartbeat. But honestly, this whole solar cycle thing, it's always seemed a bit abstract to me. Can you break it down, you know, make it make sense? Absolutely. You're totally right. The sun isn't just this unchanging ball of fire we see every day. Yeah. It actually has this whole rhythm to it, a natural ebb and flow of energy. Yeah. And it's all driven by its magnetic field. Okay, magnetic fields. Go on. So imagine taking like a giant ball of yarn and just constantly stirring it around. Okay. That's kind of what's happening inside the sun, except... Instead of yarn, it's these superheated gases, and they're creating these tangled magnetic fields as they move. So the sun is basically like a giant cosmic ball of yarn. I like it. Exactly. But how does that actually translate into these cycles that we're talking about? Well, just like our hearts have a beat, the sun's magnetic field, it goes through these distinct phases of high and low activity. And that that's basically your solar cycle in a nutshell. And during these phases, that's when we see things like sunspots. Sunspots, right. Yeah, so yeah. those are those darker, cooler areas on the sun's surface. Think of them like little knots of really intense magnetic energy. Okay, so more sunspots, more active sun. You got it. And guess what? We're currently in solar cycle 25, officially started back in December 2019, and it has been a wild ride. No kidding. It's been pretty eventful even here on Earth. And this particular cycle... Well, it's expected to be stronger than the last few, which explains why we're seeing so many more of these intense and frequent auroras. Wow, so we're really witnessing a period of heightened solar activity right now. That's amazing. But how does all of that energy, how does it actually translate into these incredible light shows, you know, what we call the auroras? Well, that is where things get really mind-blowing. Oh. So during a solar flare, Imagine for a second the sun releasing the same amount of energy as if we detonated all of the world's nuclear weapons at the same time. Okay, that's a lot of energy. <laughs> oh, and multiply that by several million. That's the kind of power we're talking about. I know, that is both terrifying and really, really cool. I knew the sun was powerful, but that is on another level. So during these intense bursts of energy, the sun is basically hurling stuff our way. Like, what exactly is coming at us? Well, it's not so much stuff in the traditional sense, but more like a massive wave of charged particles, electrons and protons blasted out into space at unbelievable speeds. And these aren't just little flares. Sometimes the sun throws these massive tantrums that we call coronal mass ejections or CMEs. CMEs, right. Yeah. And during a CME, the sun blasts out billions of tons of this superheated material. Billions. Okay, billions of tons of superheated material hurtling towards Earth. Should we be panicking? Not just yet. Luckily for us, Earth has this pretty impressive defense system, uh, our magnetic field. Oh, right. Our magnetic field. Like a giant force field around the planet. It acts like a shield, deflecting most of those charged particles before they can reach us. Phew, that's good to know. So we can thank our magnetic field for keeping us safe from those solar tantrums. But I'm still kind of curious about the auroras. If our magnetic field is so good at protecting us, how do those charged particles manage to create those incredible light shows we see, you know, the northern lights? That's a great question. And it all comes down to the Earth's poles. Oh. You know, those magnetic north and south points you see on a compass. Right. Well, now imagine the Earth is wearing these invisible magnetic goggles. Okay. These goggles deflect most of the sun's energy, but some of it it kind of sneaks in at the poles, uh -huh. sort of like how light bends around the edge of sunglasses. Okay, I can kind of picture that. So the poles are kind of like weak spots in the Earth's magnetic armor. In a way, yeah. And that's where those charged particles that manage to slip through, they get funneled down into our atmosphere, and then they collide with oxygen and nitrogen molecules. Mm -hmm. You know, the air we breathe and those collisions, that's what creates the auroras. So it's like a cosmic game of billiards with these charged particles crashing into our atmosphere. You got it. And just like hitting a billiard ball makes it move, these collisions, they energize those oxygen and nitrogen molecules, causing them to release light. And voila, you get those 
dancing curtains of green, pink, and purple that we call the Aurora Borealis. That's amazing. It's like each collision is a tiny brushstroke painting those vibrant colors across the sky. But you mentioned earlier that we're seeing auroras in some unusual places lately, further south than normal. What's causing that? I thought those magnetic funnels you were talking about, they kind of kept the action mostly up near the poles. You're right. Typically, auroras do tend to stick close to those polar regions. But remember those solar tantrums we were talking about, like those CMEs? Oh, yeah. Well, when the sun has a really strong outburst like that, it can kind of overwhelm Earth's magnetic field a bit. So the shield gets overloaded and more of those charged particles can get through. Exactly. That's when the auroral oval, that's the area where auroras are usually visible. It expands southward, giving those of us at lower latitudes a chance to catch a glimpse. There were even some reports recently of potential sightings in, mentioned a specific location from recent news relevant to the listener. Wow, no kidding. That's incredible. You know, I've always wanted to see the Northern Lights. I always figured it was one of those things I'd have to travel like to Alaska or Iceland for. Oh, it's definitely a bucket list experience. And you're right. Those are usually the prime viewing spots. Yeah. But the fact that we're seeing them in more southern locations now, it's a real testament to just how active this current solar cycle has been. It really makes you realize that even though it seems so far away, the sun has a much bigger impact on us here on Earth than we realize. And not just in terms of, you know, giving us light and warmth. Absolutely. It's a powerful reminder of just how interconnected we are with the cosmos. And speaking of the sun's power, you know how long this period of heightened solar activity is supposed to last? You know, now that you mention it, I was wondering the same thing. Is this just a temporary thing or are we in for a wild ride for years to come? Well, I've got some good news and maybe a little bit of well, not so good news, depending on how you look at it. Ooh, intrigue. Lay it on me. So the peak of this solar cycle, what scientists call the solar maximum, that's predicted to happen sometime around 2025. Okay, next year. So prime time for aurora hunting then. You got it. During solar maximum is when we see the greatest potential for those huge explosive solar storms. You know, the kind that can really supercharge the auroras. So what happens after 2025? Does the sun just suddenly chill out and it's back to, like, business as usual? Not quite. It's more of a gradual kind of wind down. Yeah. After that peak, the sun's activity will slowly decrease as we head towards what we call the solar minimum. But it's not like someone just flips a switch, you know? Okay, so there's still hope for us aurora chasers even after next year. Absolutely. Yeah. Even as we move away from solar maximum, there's always a chance of those big isolated solar storms popping off. Less frequent, of course, but they can still pack a punch and create some pretty spectacular auroras. That is good to know. You know, it's amazing to think about the sheer power of the sun. I think we take it for granted sometimes, but it's not just this, like, benign ball of light in the sky. Yeah. It has these incredible, almost like, mood swings that can impact us here on Earth in ways we don't even realize. Absolutely. It really highlights how everything is connected in our universe, you know. And it's important to remember that the sun's influence goes way beyond just giving us light and warmth, those charged particles we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Well, they can actually disrupt satellites, mess with GPS signals, even cause surges in power grids, leading to blackouts. Wait, really? So the same thing that causes these beautiful auroras can also wreak havoc on our technology? It's a bit of a double-edged sword. That's why scientists are constantly monitoring the sun, you know, trying to predict what it's going to do. Yeah. The more we learn about solar weather, the better we can prepare and protect our technology from those big solar storms. That makes a lot of sense. Knowledge is power, right? Especially when you're dealing with something as powerful as the sun. Well, this deep dive has been absolutely incredible. I had no idea there was so much to learn about something as, you know, seemingly simple as the Northern Lights. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? It really gives you a whole new appreciation for the power of, well, the cosmos and our place in it all. I agree. It's pretty humbling when you think about it. So to all our listeners out there, next time you see a clear night sky, take a moment, look up, and really let your mind wander. Who knows, you might even catch a glimpse of those shimmering auroral lights and remember this conversation. And hey, if you're feeling adventurous, maybe even plan that trip north, or south, depending on where you are, to see the aurora borealis or its southern counterpart, the aurora australis, in person. It's truly a bucket list experience. Until next time, keep exploring and never stop looking up at the stars.